Hi everyone and welcome to a new Decode tutorial. Today I want to talk about a very trendy and very cool topic using machine learning models inside the browser. So uh, you know about machine learning, everyone is using ChatGPT, but did you know that you can actually run some of the models directly in your browser without having to call any of the APIs such as OpenAI, Claude, Anthropic, I mean, Mistral AI and all the other models. And the way to do this is to use the Transformer.js library, which is a port of the Transformers Python library created by the Hugging Face. So if you're not familiar with the Hugging Face, it's, it's a French-based startup that is basically um, allowing people to host model, model weights, uh, some kind of uh, code like Python or JavaScript code online to share uh, with the community and it's becoming the hub of all the models. Now they made this transformers library to simplify the access to all the thousands, like, like really thousands of models that they have online. And the proof, if, if I go just here on models, you would see in all the different basically class or tasks that you can do with the models. And you have here like the top models. You see you have 7,000 uh, and more models already uh, uploaded. And uh, so this Transformer.js library is a port of this uh, Python library and using the Onyx framework, the runtime, to convert from the most likely the Py PyTorch model weights to the JavaScript part. And so you, it means that you can use actually your own models in a way and convert them and then use it on the web. And uh, what I did here is to try to implement this library directly in cables so that it's very easily accessible and it works well with our node-based workflow. So just to demonstrate the app today, uh, we will actually use three different models. One will do the speech to text, so transcribing my voice. The second one will run some kind of a basic uh, classification, like sentiment analysis, whether it's positive or negative. And the third one will use the text uh, synthesis and basically recreate doing from text to speech. So let's see if it works. Uh, hello, this is a test. I'm very happy today. And let's see. So we have the... Hello, this is a test. I'm very happy today. We have, so the voice of the, the that generated voice is a bit uh, low energy, I would say, but uh, it still works, right? You, it's green, meaning that it's supposed to be positive. So let's try to say something sad. Hello, I'm very sad today. Hello, I'm very sad today. So kind of works, right? And you have the, the it's being red because it's negative. So this is what we have here. And so it doesn't seem like it, but we are actually using three different machine learning models with their weights directly inside of cables without calling any other external API. So how, how do you, how, how can you get started to play with this? Uh, let's try to, to break down the app the, and, and just start simply with one uh, model, right? So I'm gonna go here on the side and explain uh, all the steps. The first one is this guy here, which is a way to, if I click here, import module, it's an op that actually doesn't really exist uh, in cables because uh, if you're familiar with our previous video you would know from the cable, cables tutorial the whole lesson plan that we have three videos on how to import external libraries to cables and in, in short you need to wrap the libraries into uh, um, IIFE which is a way to like old school JavaScript um, way I would say but now most of the new libraries use this uh, module uh, way so which is a way to scope the code so that it doesn't really interfere with the whole window and then you're not overriding some other uh, code by just importing a library so it's cool in on the paper but it's not very well normalized so you see we have this kind of external code that imports and there's like basically four ways here just to import a module and the umd universal definition module the es6 way and it could be export as default or name module so this is a bit technical. I talk about this more in previous videos. So please, if you're not really familiar with these topics, uh, watch uh, them. But what you have to know here, that this is the, just a path to the library. That we, and this library changes uh, like very often, right? So it would be 
um, when you watch this video, please check if there's not a new preview, like better version and try to host it on your cables asset and just put the path here. And then basically this is being aliased as the transformers library, which is exactly what we want. And once we have imported the module, it tells you, okay, all right, I have the module, it exists. Now I can start to build the pipeline. And the pipeline is exactly matching what the library offers us. You have basically three things. Uh, the task. So as I said, in the, this library has many different tasks that you can uh, play with. So for instance here, like the sentiment analysis. And if you don't put any model, like if you don't put this model ID or path, it will basically use the default one, which may not, I mean, surely is not the best that you can uh, use. And so, but here you can specify the model ID. So this, if it's not local, it would actually be uh, going online and downloading from the hugging face. If you have a local model ID, you could put here the URL and just check use local model and it will uh, import it. If you need ex any other options in addition to this, you can just plug them here. We will see that uh, in a bit in the other model. But once you have the pipeline, then you get this pipeline object. And once it's loaded, you can run it using the transformers run pipeline, which just requires the pipeline for sure. And you specify what type of, what kind of input you want uh, here. So in our case, the first step is to transform the voice. And so, and the input could be either a URL. So let's say I'm hosting a WAV file on the web. I could put it there, but here we are a bit uh, smarter because we, we don't want to host anything. We just want to, convert our voice from the microphone, use the audio recorder to create a WAV file, but we don't need to download it, right? We just need it to be hosted in the browser's memory and it's a use a data URL, which is the how we host basically any file that you want to put in the web page. It's converted internally to this. It could be for audio, for videos, for uh, images and so forth. So here we convert basically our bytes into this kind of uh, base64 string. So it's a string of bytes anyways. And we use that as a string to pass to our pipeline. So what I did here is simply to use the start and stop button. Or if I press space here, I keep uh, the space pressed. I talk and when I will release space, it will basically stop the microphone and do the continue the whole pipeline. The space pressed, I talk, and when I release space. Right? So I just made, I put a small delay here to make sure that I really get the data URL um, as I want, and then only then run the pipeline. So this pipeline guy, when once it's finished, will give you a, an object with the key text. And this is what I get here. I get the text that I've just uh, spoke, right? And now we talk about the second stage which was the sentiment uh, analysis. So here I just used the default model, which I have to be fair with you, it really bad because I'm not sure this is negative, but it's classified as negative. But just to show you the, the power of chaining models, basically. So it's the same thing. For now, at the beginning, when I just use a trigger once to just load all the different models that I would use, but I separate the running once the model is in memory with another op, right? So I get my text. I put it as a string again, and I will have, this is the object that I get. So it's, you have to convert to an array because it's just the first value of the array. I can show you this, show you here, All right? So I just get here the sentiment and have a score. So I'm not sure why this is classified as negative with a high value because it doesn't seem very negative, but whatever, it doesn't matter here. What I do here is I just get the, the text, the label, and then I compare between the two string, whether it's negative or positive, and I just change basically the color of my text mesh. So something that I didn't mention is that what if the text is very long? Uh, for the, the purposes of the text mesh, I don't want the string to be very long. So I use this add line breaks to, to, to basically jump a line if it goes above 50. Uh, characters, right? So uh, you can play with this and it will uh, uh, in real time just um, modify the layout of the text, which is pretty handy for this kind of uh, a demonstration. So we are here, right? We, had, we are the second stage and now the, th the last stage is a bit uh, different. So here I want to uh, to go back to my pipeline here, this third one. I want to use the text to speech and this is the, the path, the model that I use. And you notice that this model needs to 
um, I actually use a, an option so it's not quantized. So I, I get the uh, quant quantize means that you want to round some the precision of the numbers so that it takes less space and it's uh, or uh, it goes faster. But of course, by doing that, you also lose precision. So for voice or for models where you need high precision, you want the models to be non-quantized, right? To be floating points all the way. But uh, of course, it's uh, the trade-off. It's a higher model, like um, a bigger model in terms of space and also higher time of inference. So it takes longer to have this, but hopefully we have better quality. So I load this option here in the run pipeline and, and, and sorry, in the build pipeline here. Now that I've built my pipeline, it's exactly like the same, uh, like before. I'm using the run pipeline to uh, just put some text. And here I also have some options, which is the voice. Because one is the model, but one is the basically the, the tokens, like the model weights that you need to synthesize the voice. And this is also, I just took it from the example, but if you had like different voices, this is where you would put the, um, the, 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 the voice basically. So I put this here as a parameter. So it also means you could switch this uh, on the fly. And then when we have the results, I can simply get first the sampling rate because I, I want to make sure that I get it first because my, I have a specified uh, modified uh, audio buffer that I will uh, try to push to the cables community so that it's available to everyone. Because by default, an audio buffer from cables only works by reading a URL. But here we don't need to because we already have the array with the values and the sample rate. So we could recreate the buffer directly from there. And, and basically now that we have the audio buffer, we just have the audio buffer player and then we will just play the sample the sample and here have this the volume or to mute it so basically that's the whole pipeline and uh, and of course this is just the beginning because they keep adding models all the time and i've just already think of other things you could do uh, an obvious one would be text generation so it's a bit more difficult to run like a full fledged llm in uh, in the web but there already are some libraries that does it and don't do it because yeah, I think I can think of two at least. Um, and it's actually under the hood we'll use the transformer JS thing. Um, a simpler maybe use case would be to do um, like all these things about images, for instance, image detection, image classification. So you want to basically embed the image, try to find features, visual features and say group all the pigs on one side, all the dogs and all the cats, mm -hmm. and they will be in their own cluster. So instead of having to call an external model to do this, you could use and do it on the fly. So now you could think, why do I need to do this on the fly? Because I'm, I'm basically pushing the computations to all my users instead of doing them uh, on the server. So it really depends on the type of applications because on in the one hand, you, if you just want to make a cool demo uh, and it's for instance for an installation, then it's, it's fine because it's going to run on only on one computer. So actually, this is quite handy. Now, if you want to have the data that you need to cluster and you know and you own the data and they are on your server, it doesn't really make sense to rerun the clustering a billion times if you have a billion users. At the same time, you are, you, the cost of your computer is going to be, of your server is going to be very low because you are just basically serving files and you let the users use their own GPU to work. So there's also the trade-off here, but of course, they need to download all the models. So if you need to make some special source of uh, customized models and, and pipeline, in a way, you are also revealing uh, the source by pushing the code uh, onto the user. So it's, it's, it's a trade-off, right? But if you want very private and guarantee your user that it's not going to upload anything, then you can also uh, run the code uh, like this. So yeah, it's it's the beginning, right? Think of in the future where all the computers and all the phones will have dedicated AI chips built in, then probably the OS itself would get some uh, LLMs. I think Apple announced it already with Apple Intelligence, but all the computers will have this. And and, and in a way, the web, there's some kind of standard being on going on called the, I think it's called the well web, uh, web AI or web LLM or something like this, so that you would have new APIs on the web to access the local language models that you would have on your computer. So maybe that this workflow uh, for, the, actually, for text generation at least would be obsolete 
uh, in the future. But think of the Transformers library as a very um, a big uh, repository of, of tasks. And you can see them here, right? Just to give you like an overview, question answering, summarization, text generation, translation, for instance. This is pretty cool. If you want to, don't want to host 10 versions of your website, you could have the translation on the fly. Um, yeah, all the vision tasks, segmentation, depth estimation, which is pretty handy. If you, it's like you create an image, for instance, with the, um, a stable diffusion or mid journey, and then you want to estimate the depth to make in your cables patch. Uh, actually, we did some experiments with this, but we were uh, doing the experiments on the server and we're not estimating the depth uh, locally. So they, they, I think there's a ton of creative effects that you could do just by combining these models. And now we have a cool way of implementing this uh, of just in a few ops in cable. I hope that this video was informative and that you see the potential of using AI in a node-based manner here on cables and that you're gonna create amazing experiences with this. Uh, if you do, please let me know in the comments or join our Discord and just chat uh, with me or with us uh, there. We'll be really happy to see what you came up with. So. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.